on the Ozarks in 5. Brought to you by the Springfield Green County Park Board, roto Rooter Plumbing and Drain Service, Blue Current, and Thompson Sales. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Hey, good morning to you on Thursday. It's the, the calm after the storm because, man, what a night we had last night. It started in the evening, storms and uh, damage you know, in different places. So crews are out assessing that to see what kind of damage. Were there tornadoes? Uh, all the things that you have to do. So, man, it was kind of a mess last night, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, the hail is what... Um, I was struck by, I mean, the tornado too, <laughs> not like literally potential, but the hail, right. Not, not literally, but, um, there were reports of tennis ball sized yeah. hail. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. That'll, um, that'll ding you up pretty good. A house, yeah. a roof, car, all that stuff. So yeah. a lot of assessment going on this morning. We'll learn more about what happened in the Ozarks, uh, probably today. At daybreak, uh, and, at daybreak, a, really. Yeah. And of course you can, uh, check out Abby Dyer's wake up weather to find out what kind of weather is on tap today. Uh, and then uh, we'll get to the news, which is weather related because we've had tornado warnings recently in the Ozarks, as you know, quite a few and some problems in reaction to some of those tornado warnings. A couple of weeks ago, you'll recall us talking about this. Citizens were locked out of a storm shelter in Ozark. The doors were locked. They couldn't get in. So they were outside during the storm. Then just this week, tornado, sir tornado sirens sounded for all of Greene County. We heard those uh, instead of for just the people living in a certain part of the county that was actually under a warning because they can now divide that up. But the problem was uh, the sirens were sounded uh, by a mistake with the computer program. The software wasn't working properly. Uh, we're told now that that has been fixed going forward. But uh tough time to work out the kinks is live <laughs> you know well yeah uh, and i mean it aired on the good side right for the like, warnings. even though yeah i mean better the get the did. warning than not get the warning yeah and there was a tornado elsewhere at that time so i mean yeah it's nobody's any worse for the wear no but uh you get there's a concern about crying wolf uh because people people if nothing happens where they are they tend to to uh, take Turn it, it less the serious next the next time. That's yeah. the concern. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason why they went to those warnings where they were very specific because they can be now. Uh, it just didn't work properly. So right. I think they got that fixed. Meanwhile, Springfield based convoy of hope just keeps adding States to the areas where it is responding to tornado damage. A convoy is now also on the ground in Michigan where a tornado hit in the Southwestern part of that state, the portage area, my old television market for a few years, uh, convoy is now delivering tarps and totes and cleaning supplies, hygiene items, and more to that area. Of course, convoys also on the ground in Oklahoma. In Barnesville, convoy is distributing bagged ice and food. Ice, a big issue. Also in sulfur uh, and other areas of Oklahoma. Uh, and then convoy is also giving residents in the Splendora and Hardin area of Texas help with the flooding that they've been dealing with. Uh, cleaning supplies are needed down there, water, hygiene items. So uh, a lot of trucks headed out of convoy, lots of different directions over the past, well, several days this week, uh, yeah, but and over last. the past few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Missouri teachers rejoice. The baseline teacher pay just increased to at least $40,000 per year. Plus for those with a master's degree and at least 10 years of experience, they will get a minimum $48,000 per year. Governor Parsons signed two new bills. Uh, one of those also incentivizes five day school weeks. You know, a lot of smaller districts have gone to four day weeks, yeah. uh, but uh, he's incentivizing those who will stay at five. Also increasing support for early childhood and increasing funding for small schools okay it's awesome all right teachers be happy about that it's a step in the right direction in their minds i would think uh, an inmate in the pulaski county jail uh, died while behind bars it happened after a fight with another inmate so his death was caused uh, a man is now charged with second degree murder for that uh, inmate on inmate captured uh, cameras captured it uh, jailers say lee uh, the man charged punched the inmate who died four times in the face, neck, and head. The inmate, uh, the victim, lost consciousness, fell to the floor, uh, and now uh, there will be charges against the inmate who 
there are charges. Yeah. yeah. Second yeah, degree yeah, yeah. murder. Second degree but murder, I mean, right. still far from being over, it sounds like. Right. Because they're going to find out exactly how that happened, where were jailers and all that sort of thing. Uh, also, this, a 39-year-old from Springfield is in trouble for making a terroristic threat at a local church. Uh, police say Shane Sylvie was in Schweitzer Church parking lot, threatening to shoot people there. Uh, church leaders say he was walked into the parking lot, began yelling at parents and kids who were walking to their vehicles. Officers approached uh, him, and they say he became enraged at that point. Uh, and, and that's when they put cuffs on him and took him to jail. So hmm. serious threat. Uh, that's just, uh, the same weekend as I think it was in Pennsylvania. I don't know if you saw that video of the man walking into a church. He was sitting in a, in a pew, one of the first few pews on the right. He gets up, he walks up, points a gun right at the pastor and the gun jams. The pastor dives behind the, the, uh, podium. Oh man. The gun jams. And uh, a congregant comes from behind, grabs the guy, takes him down. The pastor then comes around, helps get the gun away from him. But uh, oh. uh, it's harrowing video because, and it's a miracle because the gun jammed. I mean, he was yeah. Point Blake right at You it. know, a gun jammed like that in um, Jasper County somewhere. Was it Joplin? It was um, Newton County, maybe somewhere in the Ozarks, probably, I don't know, 12, 13 church? years ago. No, at, at a school. Oh, at a school. At a school. And it was... Was that a long gun? It was a rifle It was a, a long gun. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I do too. But now I can't remember all the details. I covered it as a young whippersnapper reporter. And I was yeah. like, wow. I mean, it was truly miraculous because right. it's so rare that that would jam like that. And it did when it counted. Right. right. All right. The Springfield Daily Citizen reports that Hammond's Tower and the John Q. Hammond's building could undergo some pretty amazing renovations and return to local ownership. Hmm. That would be pretty fancy. Uh, reporters at the Daily Citizen use the Sunshine Law to get some details on this. Uh, they also report that it looks like there's a proposal for the city's acquisition of the Jordan Valley Car Park. Okay. So I don't know what it all means, but it could go to um, local ownership, which could then mean quite a transformation for the landmarks in downtown Springfield. Yeah. Um, at least the wheels are turning. All right. You know? We'll be watching that. And, uh, I know because how long, how many decades have we reported, like trying to get new life for the hers building and it hasn't happened, you know? Well, what do you mean, the hers building. I mean, well, it was, First the hers building, but now this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. It did one by one. Yeah, 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 one by one. But uh, it's cool to see. I don't know to see what that could mean. You know, yeah. um, this is interesting. It appears the Boy Scouts of America are rebranding of sorts. They will no longer be the Boy Scouts, but rather Scouting America. Leader states an effort to be more inclusive. Uh, numbers have been falling off for quite a while for the Boy Scouts. As you might know, they have been plagued with bankruptcy, sexual abuse allegations. Um, the new name goes into effect this upcoming February for the organization's 115th birthday. Yeah, they've had a lot of issues. I don't know that the name is the issue, but uh, they're I think gonna... changing the name actually is going to cause more problems than it does good. So we shall see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, the girls crowds aren't changing their name, yeah. nor, nor should they. Yeah. So, right. I mean, there's a lot of Girl Scout. There's a lot of girls who have now like In the climbed Scout. the ranks. Yeah. Yes. Of the Boy Scouts. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I'm, I'm a tomboy. Like I'd probably enjoy Boy Scout activities more than Girl Scout activities. Um, in fact, I can assure you of that because they do sewing and no, thank you. Um, but I, I don't know. It's it's interesting because it's been around for so long. So, um, all right. Now to this. Missouri is one of six states suing the Biden administration over proposed changes to Title IX. The rule has been on the books for about 50 years to prevent discrimination in education and sports activities. The Biden administration's proposed changes will expand those protections based on gender identity starting in August. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey and others uh, contend that the proposed change to emphasize gender identity would, quote, gut the very athletic opportunities that Title IX was designed to provide. Well, 
That seems true. <laughs> I'm surprised that there aren't more Title IX supporters who who fought for it at the beginning, uh, stepping in to say something about this because it does seem like a, re- a reversal if anybody's allowed to play anything. Right. Uh, if you've ever wanted to have a financial impact, now would be a good time to give to the Council of Churches of the Ozarks. Uh, the money specifically for foster kids and their families. Uh, Philanthropist Bill and Virginia Dar are matching donations this month made to the Council of Churches' Ambassadors for Children program. So that's good stuff. $50,000 match. So anything you give up to $50,000 will be matched very generously by the Dars. Uh, and we know, uh, if, you, if you don't know about the great need uh, for foster families, uh, and the great need of foster children in the Ozarks, it is sizable. Yeah, it is sizable. It is. So this is a step. In fact, to, some of the worst in the country, apparently. Yeah, so. this is a step to really help in that in that vein. Yeah. All right. Congratulations are in order for two Smarties from Springfield Schools, both winners in the National Merit Scholarship Program. Um, Ilana Noor Hadai, who's a senior at Central High School, and Sahara Smith from Catholic High School. Each girl gets $2,500, which that's fancy, but get this. They were chosen among 15,000 finalists. Wow. In the program. How cool is that? Good for them. Yeah. And we have two in Springfield. That's amazing. Yeah. I'd chip in 20. You'd chip in 20 what? Bucks to help them out. If, if the other people in the Ozarks, we could probably do much better than 2,500 bucks. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's a low amount given the um, well, level of like academic um, prowess that they clearly exhibited, <laughs> you know? Well, my, guess, my guess is this is one of many scholarships they will yeah. be Yeah, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. that it is, but yeah. Um, all right, this Saturday is the Stamp Out Food Hunger um, or stamp out hunger food drive, I should say. Um, so if you get mail service, you are encouraged to take part. Just set a non-perishable food item in a bag by your mailbox. Your mail carrier, when delivering letters on Saturday, will pick it up and handle the rest. So it makes it very easy. Yep. Um, also on Saturday, there's a family fun day at Rutledge, Rutledge Wilson Farm Park. It's kind of hard to say. Uh, It's from three to five. There will be free food, bounce houses, games, as well as free fishing. Um, And then finally, next Saturday, um, so the 18th, local radio station 92.9 The Beat is hosting a tribute to Taylor Swift at the Gilloys in downtown Springfield. Yeah, it's going to be a visual and vocal event. Uh, So not just her music, but also video. And they're going to be celebrating Taylor's music the swifties will be out in force for that they over will. the gilloys they will wow uh, by the way it is the gilloys i think ethan and i've already told you but we learned it's not the gilloys it's the gilloys correct um we got that straight from jeff over there who manages it there you go yeah he runs the place and uh there there was a mr gilloys yep. who started it who started yep. it way back on route 66 and uh, it is, as he pronounced his name, Gilloy. So, yep. There so, you go. so now we're going to try to say it right every time, even though I learned, we've had like 15 to, years of bad habits. I, when I first got to town, I learned that from uh, our uh, our first GM over at KY3. Uh, he, used Scott, to, yeah. he, he was local. He grew up here. And that's what he called it. And I was like, do you hear how he pronounces that? And uh, he said, well, that's the way you do it. And I said, all right. So I tried to do that since. Uh, and now I know it's in fact true. Yeah. There you go. Not that I doubted him, but. Um, <laughs> let the record show. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, good luck with cleaning up today. Everyone's going to need it. Um, yeah. The hail damage and and everything else. So um, hats off to our crews, our utility crews and, and everybody else doing work around the Ozarks this morning. So yeah, it'd be um, nice to uh, it'd be nice to get out of this pattern of extreme weather hitting all over the Midwest, from Nebraska down to Texas, up to Michigan, through our neck of the woods. I mean, it's it's been all over. So it, yeah. well, sometimes when you get in those patterns, you stay in that pattern for weeks at a time. So we need to get out of it. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Amen. Um, all right, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on Friday.
It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather, sponsored by Scooters Coffee and Rescue Towing. Here's your host, meteorologist Abby Dyer. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your Thursday. We are waking up with temperatures in the low to mid 50s as of 5 a.m., and the skies are clear. I have much better news for you in the forecast today compared to yesterday. Clear skies in the forecast. That means sunshine on deck for us all day. No rain, no thunderstorms, no severe weather. And that's really good news because some of you will need to use today and the next couple of days to clean up from storm damage that came through the area last night. A lot of National Weather Service survey teams will be out surveying areas with some of the damage as well. Monette, Aurora, just a couple of the places. And there was a lot of hail. So I think a lot of folks will be out assessing uh, the homes, the roofs, seeing where damage occurred late yesterday. It was a wild afternoon and evening with severe weather in the Ozarks and a couple of tornado warnings. We also had so many severe thunderstorm warnings. We lost count, but thankfully today is a much calmer day in the forecast. Temperatures are comfortable this morning. It's actually going to end up being an absolutely beautiful afternoon with temperatures that land in the middle 70s. I'm going 74 degrees for the high temperature in the forecast today, so much improved on yesterday's weather. I expect that we are going to have a north wind in the forecast today. Nothing too strong, maybe 5 to 10 miles an hour. Also a little bit of a breeze, but it shouldn't keep us too limited. I expect highs will still make their way into the low and mid 70s. And that combined with sunshine is going to feel great. It'll be a nice day for outdoor activities. And I said, mentioned some of you might be out picking up some limbs, things like that. Even if you weren't in some of the hardest hit areas, there was a whole lot of rain with some of those thunderstorms and some gusty winds too. So there could still be some places left over with a little bit of storm damage to clean up today. We are going to be dry not only today, but also tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday. We need the dry stretch of days, and that's exactly what we're going to get. Also, through this time period, temperatures look really comfortable. So if you are looking ahead to the weekend and thinking about outdoor time, it's all a yes. It's looking really nice across the Ozarks with temperatures back into the 70s every single day, starting today, lasting all the way through Sunday afternoon. We are not without severe weather across the country today. It's still in the forecast for much of the South and the Southeast. We get a break here in the Midwest, and I'm expecting some of that cold air that's been ongoing. I've been telling you about some of the snow in the higher elevations of the Rockies and the Cascades. Well, some of the cold air associated with that is going to ride the north wind down into the middle part of the country. So we get a nice little cool down here, even though it's not going to be cold. It'll be cooler with high temperatures falling back into the low and mid 70s today. I have more rain in the forecast, but it doesn't get here until early next week. It's Monday before we see that chance for rain. And at least at this point, it does not look like we'll be talking severe storms or heavy rain, just kind of your common May rain shower in the forecast as we move into the early part of next week. Of course, I'll keep my eye on the models if anything changes and starts to look like it could be severe. But right now, looks like this should be pretty smooth sailing in the Ozarks. High temperature today, 74 degrees under sunny skies with a north breeze. A little bit cooler tomorrow with highs limited to near 70. I think we stay in the mid-70s on Saturday. Another beautiful day. And then by Sunday, we're still talking this Chamber of Commerce weather. Uh, Clear skies through this entire time period. We should see plenty of sunshine. And then by the time we get to Sunday, I think highs start to sneak back up into the upper 70s again before rain moves back into the Ozarks for Monday. Around the country, what's making headlines? Well, it's that risk of severe weather that moved through portions of the Midwest and the Tennessee Valley late last night. A moderate risk for severe storms over parts of the southern plains today. Excessive rainfall also in some of those areas. So we are going to see continued headlines of flooding across the country, severe weather across the country. And uh, still along the furthest southern tier of the country, are talking almost record-breaking heat with a lot of heat for portions of South Texas. So that's what's happening for our friends down South while the snow is wrapping up in some of the higher elevations as the Rockies, as I mentioned earlier. All right, it's time for the Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather Brain Twister Trivia Question. This is the question that I left you with yesterday. Famous American architect Frank Lloyd Wright once thought of building a, quote, mile-high skyscraper that would be the tallest building in the world. 
What did he call that building, that concept? The options that I gave you were A, the Missouri, B, the Kentucky, C, the Illinois, or D, the Tennessee. The answer is C, the Illinois, which kind of makes sense because if you think about the states and their shapes, Illinois is the longest, the tallest. Abraham Lincoln is from Illinois. He was really tall. (laughs) So uh, the Mile High Skyscraper would have been called the Illinois. It's a concept proposal for a skyscraper that was to be over one mile high. It was conceived and described by Frank Lloyd Wright himself in his 1957 book, A Testament. Uh, The design was intended also to be built in Chicago. It included 528 stories, um, a gross square footage area that was, I can't even conceive of. Can you imagine how how large this building would be? Uh, He stated that there would be parking for 15,000 cars and 100 helicopters. If it would have been built, it would top the list of the tallest buildings in the world by far, being more than four times the height of the Empire State Building and almost twice as tall as the world's current tallest building. Now, you know, if the Illinois is ever to be built, I guess it will be in Chicago and be uh, the tallest four times over. C, the answer. Congrats if that was your guess. Here's the uh, next brain twister trivia question that I have for you today. Americans, the average American eats about 1.5 pounds of what every year? Do you think it is A, spinach, B, romaine lettuce, C, cabbage, or D, turnip greens. None of these weigh very much, and so I guess that explains the 1.5 pounds every year. Uh, But what do you think it is? What do you think the average American eats about 1.5 pounds of every year? You can let me know your guess. That's at aroundtheozarks.com. It is free to enter, so make sure you head on over to the website and enter your guess there. You can win $20 to Scooter's Coffee every single weekday here on Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Thank you to our sponsor, Scooters and Rescue Towing. And thank you for listening this morning. By the way, if you are enjoying Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather, I would really appreciate it if you would give us a nice review wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple, all the platforms. We will take it. So if you have been enjoying the podcast, let us know. Thanks so much. I sure appreciate you listening and thank you so much. We will chat again early tomorrow morning.